Yes. Hey. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Right. We don't use no soundtrack. You don't know. All, you know how they do like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No just, question. It's just us. It's just us. <laughs> it's just us. Cole Beasley. First of all, very nice to meet you. Um, you cut your golden locks off. I did. What was that about? You should have seen her face. She was shocked. When she, I, he cut his hair. When I just seen you walk up, I'm like, "Where's the hair?" What are you, are you um, making a statement? No, actually, growing up, this is pretty much how I had my hair all the time for the most part. Um, you know, I I tell my dad I wanted a haircut, and he's like, "All right, I got you." <laughs> he'd, he'd bring out One the size. clippers. He'd bring out the clippers. We'd go in the, in the backyard on the deck, and he'd cut my hair. So I actually cut this myself. Oh, you did it yourself? Yeah, it looks great. Oh wow, it looks great. I'm trying to give y'all visual. I might just need a line up in the back. That's about it. Okay, I can do that for you when we're done with the interview. <laughs> I don't let that happen. Uh, okay. Happen. Yeah. So Cole Beasley's in the building. You got a new album out. Um, it's charting on Billboard. Your single "80 Stings" is really hot. Um, I mean. Were you waiting for the season to get over with so you can t get to the music and get to this right here? Um, no, because that would mean I'd be putting you know music above football, and that's not really how it is. It's more like um, it's something that I just had in mind for a few years, so mm -hmm. we were working on it. Um, I was excited for people to hear it, but really I didn't finish till um, after the season either, so I couldn't have just put it out that early anyway. So. It was still in the works at that time. Now, Chaotic just brought you some black coffee. You like your coffee black. Mm -hmm. How do you like your women? My, my wife's got... <laughs> <laughs> he like his wife is what he uh, likes. My, my wife's black and Mexican. Oh, for real? I don't discriminate. Oh, okay. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> All right, so I want to play your, your single just in case anyone hasn't heard it yet, and then we can go in and talk about the music okay. and other stuff. But I want, I want to play that. The single that we debuted. Oh yeah, I I told Beasley when he came in. I okay. said we played it like we played it like three times yeah. in a row because we was trying to put out a telepathic message to you. Get your ass here in the studio because we are supporting you. And the but it's fire though. It's bars. It's fire. Like I I'm gonna say this. You're the first athlete. A, well, football athlete right. that I've ever heard that had bars. Like you know, a lot of them try. <laughs> who, who, who do you know anyone who else was trying? Football player? Yeah. No, I know some basketball players. I don't know well, Shaq, players. Shaq had a platinum he's album. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but he's I remember the, he didn't have uh, bars. No, he didn't have bars. Cole Beasley got bars. Beasley got like, bars. I don't know if Shaq had bars, but he came out at the right time. There's a few. Like right. Le'Veon Bell, Melvin Gordon, mm -hmm. and. Uh, I know, I forget. Remember, somebody. Iverson rapped a little bit. Yeah. Okay, we were going to go into 80 Stings. Phil. Morning. That was Cole Beasley right there. Ow! Right off his new album called The Autobiography. That fire. That's fire right that there. fire. Beasley. So, what came first, sports or the love for rapping? The love for music? Uh, sports, actually. Um, I don't even know. I can't even tell you when. Well, the love for rap music came early. But as far as rapping, that was probably high schoolish, um, and it started just having kind of having fun with my friends, just in the car riding around. Oh, freestyling. Yeah. Well, did you um, did you ever go to a studio when you was in high school? You just kind of just no, played with you it. You know, I, when I listen to music, um, I don't know. It, I fell in love with it. That's all I did outside of football, and I would I would just listen to it over and over and over again. I'd analyze it and. You know why I like this, why I like that. I just kind of look at things a little differently. Uh -huh. So then, um, I kind of just fell in love with it that way. And then I got into college and bought a a music program and started playing around myself. And then I fell in love with doing that. And um, really, football is what gave me the money to kind of um, get Pro Tools and, and jump it off. Mm -hmm. But because Pro Tools is expensive. Yes, it, it is. is. It's so expensive. Coming from an NFL player. Yeah. So. <laughs> It you know it's you know it's hella high if you right. saying that. I don't even know how much that joint costs, but for you saying that. So Beasley, let me ask you the creative process for you writing. Is it uh, you get the beat first, then create the rap? Do you it's, write the raps and then add it to beats? I have no routine because I can't. Because you know, with it's football just, and, and kids, it's whenever you. Can it's around that it. time, dude. So, um, so literally, I go to work every day during the football season. It's like be there at probably six. I'll get out. I'll get probably get home at like six, and then from then on, it's it's helping my wife with the kids and doing Aww. what I got to do there. Once they go to bed, then 
That's when you I got would the soundproof do room. I ain't gonna wake nobody up. I don't. <laughs> what's, what's funny is the room. You I might be like, yo, keep it down. <laughs> the room I recorded is not is not soundproof at all. It's just like my office. Yeah, yeah. kind of turned into a studio. Yeah, I mean, I just got the equipment. Yeah, I bought it. <laughs> like, Come yeah, on, I, didn't, I didn't do anything to the walls. That's Pro cool. Tools Give is expensive. You ain't got a sound room. How much are these cowboys paying you? <laughs> I don't I understand. Just, I have other responsibilities. So. Oh, okay. You're such a dad. <laughs> yeah, like oh, you, no question. You rig dad, and that's a good thing, you know. What do you say to the naysayers? Now, I was watching First Take with uh, Shannon Sharp and Skip Bass, and they, Skip was mad at you um, for, yeah. for, for cutting the autobiography album. You know, did you happen to see that episode? I didn't see it, but I heard about it yeah. through social media. Right. Um, so I said something back to him, but... What'd you say? Um, I don't remember hell. It was on Twitter. Um, because he accused you of one the one year having 76 catches, and then you oh, drop yeah, an right. album, yeah. and then you go down to 36 catches. Yeah, yeah they, yeah, accused, they, they were saying that's the reason. But, you know, I did tell them the majority of this album was released that year. I went off, though. Yeah, 2000, the, the 76 yeah, catches. Yeah, 2016. Yeah. We probably had, sure, yeah. probably like, we got 13 songs, probably like 8 of them, 8 or 9 or 10. Yeah. We're probably done before. You know that season even ended. So, yeah, so actually, that probably had you hype, like going in there rapping, yeah, coming out, it. Supermaning. See, the thing is, I've always been doing this outside of football, even before. Like I've been since I was a rookie. So this is my seventh year. So I've been making songs for seven years, just wow. um, kind of on my own time. And you know, I didn't know it was gonna come to this. It was just you know kind of a hobby at first, but right. it still helps me, man. You it know, is. was gonna get fast and yeah, your mind. It, it, uh, <laughs> it just takes me away for a little man, a little bit. Um, there's a lot of stresses that come with that stuff, and that people don't understand. So, so it's an you, escape. Yeah, you have to have an outlet, man. Or yeah. you know, all that stuff can drive you crazy. We're talking to Cole Beasley from the Dallas Cowboys, number eleven. Uh, so the album cover, I think, is creative so you're looking into a mirror and on the other side of the mirror is you wearing a helmet or is it flip-flop it's flip-flopped right it's so, flip okay yeah. so you're on the helmet looking in the mirror and so you see you to me, it's kind of what people see all the time right. family friends no matter who it is they, they see, see me as colby's the football player right with the helmet on but you know i see me as that you got there's more to you than just the football right obviously i mean 13 tracks 46 minutes long on this and it's booming it's hard because you know a lot of family comes to the house and you know they ask for autographs and stuff so. family well yeah i mean it's, it's family it's kind of how it goes family but, asks for autographs yeah are you serious it's, it's like normal at this point so right. like, yeah. autograph you know, a check but <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> that's why i kind of you know thought of that album cover really um uh, no, i think it's clever it shows yeah, the two sides of bc so i've had a i've gotten a argument with a family member before and i was like when i'm home i just want to be mm -hmm. cold yeah. yeah you just want to be Mister. a person i do this all day so when i'm out and you know, i'll sign autographs at the mall if someone sees me or whatever mm -hmm. but when i get home i want this to be my my place so I can't music imagine. is really like your escape yeah no for sure so like do no, you have sure. are you interested in like any other like random hobbies that people probably would be like oh my gosh you know hold that hold thought. Hold hold what would they call you the sauce do they call you the sauce yes yeah, it's, it's funny how that kind of came about how um, did that come about sauce uh it was just something i kind of used for a couple of years you know when you you give a guy a move or you shake somebody you know break the ankle you call it, yeah, yeah you call it you gave him the sauce <laughs> and then it kind of stuck around with the guys, and they were all saying it too. So I was like, "Shoot, I mean, I'll just run with it then." Oh yeah, I, I like it. I like it. You saw, well, you saucy. <laughs> um, so why do you? Okay, so what do you feel about this year for the Dallas Cowboys coming up? Are you confident that y'all aren't going to have a year like last year? We're, you know, it's crazy. It's hard to know because you know every season's different. Every team, you know, they get a bunch of new players and all that. But. Um, I really think we're going to surprise a lot of people. We have a lot of guys. It's never been how it is right now. You know, it's, and how it's is it right now? All, like Dez and, and Witten and those guys are gone. We have a lot of veteran guys and big personalities that we had in the locker room that are gone now. So um, it's really just a locker room full of young, hungry dudes. And I've never, I've never been in a locker room where it's like that. Oh, right. I just got a visual. Yeah. Me too. So, okay. 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 Um, they all I really have think, okay. I really, okay. I really <laughs> think we're gonna surprise a lot of people. Some of them didn't. <laughs> 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 Dude, Shout out, you know, right <laughs> boy. That locker room is awesome. Um, so, like, when y'all left, when you lost Jason, that had to been just pretty devastating. Like, right. how, how did? Well, you haven't gone back the next season, but what did Jason bring to that locker room? Because to me, it seems like he was the leader so to speak well, i'll tell you this like if you were to create an example 
I love how they go about everything, the business, the, the team, the coaches, um, just how to act on and off the field. Like if you brought a rookie in, you would tell him to follow Jason Witten around. Right. Because he's like the... Prime example. Yeah, there's like... It's it's crazy. There's not, like no flaws in his approach to, mm. to the NFL and just how he goes about his day. You know, and he was... He was, I guess... I don't know how his exact age, but he was he was getting up there in football years now, and mm-hmm. he's still the way he came to work with the same work ethic, the, the, the same passion, the same grind, and the way he came to practice every day was just amazing at that age. And right. Just, it, like he barely lost a step, man. Just his hair, mm-hmm. not a step. You think yeah. he could have played another year? <laughs> huh? You think he could have played? He would have. He, he would have played, played this year. I think he just an opportunity came around that was too good for him. Oh to pass yeah, up yeah. For him and his family. Yeah, for sure. But Damn, dude, he would have well. He would have mm-hmm. played until they drug him off that field. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah I believe it. <laughs> We're talking to Cole Beasley from the Dallas Cowboys now. Cole, you heard the um, what the NFL dropped yesterday, the bomb about the um, no kneeling during the national yeah. anthem rule, and if you don't want to stand up, you have to stay in the locker room. Do you? have an opinion on that do you um I d- it's so new i don't but um i don't know i don't i don't, I don't want to get a back and like, forth argument yeah. bro yeah. it is it I is i don't want to get involved I in feel that you. I yeah feel you. Do you, you, you don't feel like your hands are tight or anything you just kind of I'm just, I just go with the flow, no. man. <laughs> yeah. Most part, yeah. Don't rock the point, boat. It's, yeah, right. it's, it's a business, man, and yeah, gonna do Th- that's why it's a business. That's that's why you know they're gonna do what they have to do to to get the viewers up. Yeah, to get the viewers up. Right. That, I, that's what I think. I think it's it's, it's always, a business it's, move. Just know it's always about money. Oh, yeah. that's what I said yesterday. It's yeah. money. Yeah. It's money. But Always is. Beasley, for the players as well, you guys have family, friends, bills, like things you have to take care of. Sometimes you don't right. want to get involved in something that's going to mess up your bread and butter. I mean... You got responsibilities. Yeah, but people should still have the right to do what they believe in oh, yeah, at sure. all times, but... Um, the NFL has always been like that. I mean, it's kind of... As a player, I just feel like you you're, rep- put you're your representing f- the NFL and football teams as well, so... Yeah. They have the right to find you. I mean, it's kind of how it goes. You yeah. just kind of go with the flow. Yeah. Go with the flow. Just get saucy on it's them. Part of it. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> uh, speaking of saucy, uh, you got another track I want to play off the album. Um, what's it called? Uh, United Hate of America. United Hate of America. Mm-hmm. Kind of feel like it fits in with the subject we're talking about right now. Uh, DJ Phil, let's hear it one time. Oh, well, let me pull you up though. Here we go. <laughs> Who is this singing? Destiny. Yeah, her name is uh, Destani. She's Destani? Uh, yeah, yes, Destani. Yeah, she's a 16-year-old artist. 